right, hello everybody. Welcome from the Philippines. My name is Scotty B. And welcome to the show. Today I got three more stories for you. Two are personal. When I was in the service. And then the third one we're going to be covering uh, helplines, suicide hotlines, United States and the Philippines. Uh, if you look at the screen, you'll see five numbers for the Philippines, one for the United States. And I'll be back with the first story in just a few minutes. everybody welcome back welcome back so i got the first two couple stories of just personal stuff when i was in the service uh i went into the united states army in 1979 uh and i was trained for 95 b10 which is military police officer officer at the time I don't know if there's still 95 B-10s. A lot of things changed, and that was 1979. So we're talking 45 years ago. Um, but I went through training at Fort, Fort McClellan, Alabama. I was stationed in Fort Rucker, Alabama for a short time. But these, both of these happened after I was stationed in Fort Rucker, Um they just kind of stuck in my head, even though uh, I got to drinking when I was in the service. I was 18 when I went in, and sometimes uh, it's easy to go drinking when you're when you have a bar right down the street, and uh, it's nobody's fault but mine. But anyway, I quit drinking many years ago. Thank the Lord for that. But uh, so the first story uh, was, wasn't very long after I had got the permanent party at Fort Rucker. Uh, we had a north gate. We only had one gate that was manned, and that was the south gate. Uh, the north gate was not manned. But there was a call on the radio. I wasn't called to it, but there was a call on the radio that, uh, of a car accident at the north gate. Um, I can't exactly remember how I ended up, but I ended up going out there after the fact. They already had uh, the body taken out of the car when I got there. So this is 1979, Smokey and the Bandit. Transams were, you know, the thing, especially in the South. So this guy was driving a Transam, and he hit our... The guardrail, there's just a small guard shack, like a one-person guard shack in the middle. And so the guardrails come around it, and they come to a flat point. 
and coming, I don't know if he's coming through the post because I don't think he was military, if I remember right. Uh, so, but a lot of people cut through the post going south. But um, he hit the guardrail head on at 120 miles an hour in that Trans Am. The engine was, of course, everything was pushed all the way back into the car. Uh, I think they had to cut him out. I wasn't there when they got the body out, but I think they had to cut him out of the car and stuff. And, uh, I mean, you look at the car, it went from a Trans Am to a little box at 120 miles an hour, and you hit d dead on coming up to them guardrails. And, of course, the car lost. But um, the crazy thing about it was, you know, the guy was drunk. He was passed out when it happened. He passed out. His car hit the guardrails at 120. Uh, talking to people the next day, he, he was uh, released from the hospital that night. Bumps and bruises was was okay. Uh, as far as I knew, there was no serious injuries uh, from what I heard. Um, I'm sure he probably ended up spending a night in jail or something in the local police department, but, uh, yeah, he wasn't, uh, from what I heard, he had bumps and bruises and stuff and he was cut here and there, but he was, he was, he did not die. You know, he left the hospital, I think that night or the next morning, I can't remember which exactly, but, um, that's to me, that's just wild. You hit a guardrail 120 miles an hour head on in a Trans Am, which has no protection. You're talking 1979. And not a whole lot of people wore seat belts back then and stuff. So, uh, but what they, you know, we figured out what saved his life was that he was drunk and he was passed out. Cause they say when you're, if you fall asleep driving, you hit, you know, your body's limp like that. It's not going to do as much damage as if you're tensed up waiting to crash or whatever you want to say. Uh, so, it, to me, it was just wild to find out that this guy was fine. He was okay. Uh, left the hospital, I, I think it was that night or next morning. Uh, to me, it blew my mind. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, that car just, like I said, looked like a little matchbox uh, after they after they pulled it away. So, th to me, <laughs> that, that stuck in my head a little bit. It was like, I was just amazed how much, uh, how he stood stood through that and made it through that and it was because he was passed out that he survived it, uh, more than likely is what they say so that's story number one on the par and we'll be right back with story number two god bless y'all for coming out
All right, man. Appreciate y'all waiting around for the second story. Like I said, this one also is when I was in the service. Uh, this was probably in 1980, about a year, year and a half after I was in. So like I was saying on that first story, the guy hits the guardrails 120 miles an hour head on in the Trans Am. He survives. No problems. I'm sure, he went to jail for a while, but other than that, no problems. So the second story, uh, we got called off base because as a mil Army military personnel got in a car accident. So we had to go out there. Uh, local police were already on the scene when we got there and stuff. So it was out in the country. I uh, had one of those country roads that had a two-track driveway, uh, and it, but it had a little curve in it. It had like a pond or something out there that you had to go around. And so this guy, I, guess, I think they're having a house party or something, a big old house up at the top of the hill. Uh, the little curve, and I mean it was just a little curve around uh, the pond, and they, figured he's only doing about five or ten miles an hour so i don't know how he did this but he rolled his car over on it on the <laughs> on the roof of the car and like i said the car looking at the car had no damage it didn't look like any tires blew out or anything like that uh, i don't know what distracted him uh, but he had been drinking but somehow or another, doing five or ten miles an hour, he rolled this car and it ended up on its roof. Um, he was laying next to the car with a cigarette in his mouth. And we assumed that he, his window was down. So we, we're, we're assuming that he had crawled out of the car after he rolled it. He crawled out of the car and put a cigarette in his mouth and that's when he died. So the, the only explanation I know of, I never double checked on it the only explanation we came up with was that you know when the car rolled he did something that it, it caused him to hit his head or something caused uh you know uh just hitting his head like that and he had inside bleeding internal bleeding i guess they called internal bleeding and that's all we could come up with on that uh it's a strange scene because he wasn't bleeding out or anything like that when you walk up to him he's just laying there with a cigarette in his mouth um but he was dead and um just yeah just really bizarre to me but i mean if you i always took those two accidents the one where the guy hits a guardrail at 120 and this guy's doing about 10 miles an hour and rolls his car and somehow or another must have hit his head to cause some internal bleeding or something crawls out of the car puts a cigarette in his mouth and he dies um and that just goes to show you it's uh you just never know right you just never know um i don't that don't, those, those two accents i don't know why they always stuck in my head just because the way they are uh so similar so far apart so different and so similar uh, i guess you could say you know, one going 120, one going 10 miles an hour. And you look at, if you looked at both accents, you bring them up on, on, a, uh, on a video or something like that, show the accidents. I, I would say probably 100% of the time people would say the guy in the Trans Am died. The other guy didn't. And it was different. So they've always stuck in my head. And um, yeah, to this day, I always think about it. But anyway... I hope you guys found it interesting because I, I really do. I, I just find it very curious the way God works in mysterious ways, right? He's there to guide us and help us as much as he possibly can. But anyway, we'll be back with, we're going to talk to some uh, suicide hotlines. Uh, do they have them in the Philippines? We know we, that they have them in the States, but I've only been to Philippines about five months, so. Do they have them here? Well, look on your screen. I got five numbers on there for you. There's one for the United States. That's a 988 number, of course. So we'll be right back with that. Liar. 
All right, welcome back, everybody. So now we're going to dive into the hotlines, crisis hotlines, suicide hotlines in the Philippines. Um, did a little checking on it. Uh, what I come across is they have five different major numbers. Uh, one is called In Touch Crisis Line. Um, and like I said, I put all these numbers. They're on the, if you look on the screen, you're going to see them there. So In Touch is open 24-7. Phone number is plus 632-8893-7603. Or you can go to in-touch.org. And hopefully you get the help that you want, that you need. Next one is Hopeline. Hopeline provides 24-7 free, compassionate, and confidential support by phone. They are there to help everyone in the Philippines. Uh, let's see what's going on. Who may be struggling or looking for support with anxiety, depression, loneliness, self-harm, suicide. So they're committed to suicide prevention. So if you are having thoughts of suicide or thinking about killing yourself we are they are here to listen and support you when you reach out to them you will talk with one of their trained counselors who are experienced in how to help people in your situation they will listen to you unpack your story and feelings and work with you help you through your challenges anyone may call and get support we help everyone regardless of age gender religious views or nationality they're ready to support you 24-7, whether it's the middle of the day or the middle of the night. Uh, where is Hopeline available? Available nationwide in the Philippines. And Hopeline, Hopeline supports everyone. Language, What language does Hopeline support? It says English. Uh, what can I talk to Hopeline about? Depression, uh, self-harm, stress, anxiety, loneliness, suicide, uh, Accessibility notes, alternative numbers, 0917-558-4673, Globe and TM, and 0918-873-4673, Smart. Facebook is facebook.com backslash Hopeline PH. Hopeline is with the capital H, and the PH also is capitalized. All right, so the third one is, I'm, I'm going to mess up some of these names, and I do apologize. I still haven't gotten all this name stuff down, but I think it's called Ta Tawag Pagliam, T-A-W-A-G-P-A-G-L-A-U-M, Central Bisaya. Okay, Bisaya is, a, so Tawag eh, Pagliam Central Bisaya is a helpline that is available 24-7 for individuals struggling with emotional and suicidal. Uh, 
struggling with emotional and suicidal crisis in the Philippines. We understand that life can throw its heaviest burdens on anyone, and our dedicated team is here to lend an empathetic ear. No matter where you are in the Philippines, our helpline is always open, ready to listen and offer immediate support. We offer a compassionate space to talk through your feelings and concerns. Additionally, they engage in psychoeducation to help you better understand and cope with your emotions. If further assistance, if needed, we are equipped to offer valuable referrals to professionals who can provide specialized help. Your well-being is their top priority. We are here to remind you that you are not alone and there is hope as amplified by our their slogan and yeah this is when i i don't speak Visayan. i apologize or tagalog aduna a d u n a y peglam p a g l a u m where is this place located available nationwide in the philippines and they support everyone they speak english and filipino uh, that you can talk to them about relationships, bullying, depression, pregnancy, abortion, school and work, self-harm, stress, grief and loss, anxiety, family, gambling, <clears throat> gender and sexual identity, loneliness, parenting, trauma and PTSD, substance use, suicide, supporting others, abuse and domestic violence, sexual abuse. Alternate contact numbers 0939-937-5433-0939-936-5433. So reach out if you need some help. So this next one is NCMH Crisis Hotline. <clears throat> NCMH Crisis Hotline provides 24-7 free, compassionate, confidential support over the phone. They support everyone in the Philippines who may be experiencing emotional distress related to abuse and domestic violence, anxiety, bullying, dementia, Alzheimer's, depression, eating and body image, family issues, gambling, gender and sexual identity, grief and loss, loneliness, parenting, relationships, school or work issues, self-harm stress, suicide, supporting a friend or family member, physical illness. They're available to talk with you about any kind of experience related in mental health, from a mental health crisis to, to general well-being. Their support is free. They are dedicated to preventing suicide. If you're contemplating suicide or you're worried about warning signs in someone else, please reach out to them for help. When you reach out to them, you will talk with one of their trained counselors who will collaborate with you to find solution while giving you an empathetic and compassionate ear. They have ex expertise and understanding in how to help people going through difficulties similar to what you are. Anyone can call and receive free support. We exist to help everyone, regardless of age, gender, beliefs, or ethnicity. We're, they are ready to support you 24-7 whether it's the middle of the day or the middle of the night. They're available nationwide in the Philippines, all topics, and everyone is supported. They speak English and Filipino. You can talk just about anything, eating and body image, relationships, bullying, depression, pregnancy, abortion, school and work, self-harm, stress, Grief and loss, anxiety, dementia and Alzheimer's, family, gambling, gender and sexual identity, loneliness, parenting, trauma, PTSD, substance use, suicide, supporting others, physical illness, abuse, domestic violence, sexual abuse. Accessibility notes are all numbers smart plus 63 919 057 1553. Globe is plus 63-966-351-4518, plus 63-917-899-8727, USAP, USAP. All right, the next one is called um, Bantai Bata. Helpline 163, I'm, I know I'm pronouncing it wrong, it's B-A-N-T-A-Y, B-A-T-A, -A -A, Helpline 163, 
helpline uh beta hotline is open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Their phone number is 163. You could be found online at abs-cbnfoundation.com. Uh, Banta Helpline 163 is available, nation, available nationwide in the Philippines. They support parents, children, and youth. 163 supports English and Filipino. You can talk to them about it. Eating, body language, relationship, bullying, depression, school and work, self-harm, stress, grief and loss, anxiety, family, gambling, gender and sexual identity, loneliness, parenting, substance use, suicide, supporting others, physical illness, uh, abuse and domestic violence, sexual abuse. You can go to Facebook dot com backslash bente by um, bente bed bada one six three ph so the capital b a n t a y capital b a t a one six three capital p capital h and then they have an email they're open seven days a week seven a.m to seven p.m messages received beyond operating hours are responded to the following day So get some support now from Suicide Hotline in the Philippines. If you're experiencing suicidal thoughts, you're not alone. Suicidal thoughts aren't talked about very much, but many people experience them during their lives. There are five suicide hotlines, crisis lines or helplines in the Philippines that can help. If you're not sure what suicidal thoughts look like, they might look like any of the following. Feeling a deep sense of loneliness or isolation. Feeling like you wouldn't be missed if you were gone. Feeling like your own health and well-being no longer matter. Thinking that the world would be better off without you. Making plans for ending your life. Losing your motivation to keep going. Thinking you're going to feel this way forever. Feeling like you can't cope with the pain anymore. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you're suicidal, you're going through an emotional crisis. Being in crisis mode can give rise to interest, intense emotions that are difficult to process you may be overwhelmed and want nothing more than for the pain to end it may not seem like it but things can get better even though things might feel hopeless getting support from someone who cares can make a big difference speaking to a crisis counselor in philippines may help you see that there is light at the end of the dark tunnel you are in right now if you are having thoughts of suicide today, consider contacting the Helpline in the Philippines for free, confidential help. You can find Philippine helplines and hotlines by topic. In the Philippines, there are five helplines and hotlines that support with the following topics. Abuse, domestic violence, anxiety, bullying, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, depression, eating and body image, family, gambling gender, sexuality, identity, grief and loss, loneliness, parenting, physical illness, pregnancy and abortion, relationships, school and work, self-harm, sexual abuse, stress, substance use, suicide, supporting others, trauma, and PTSD. So check it out today. If you go to findahelpline.com, you'll find these. If you don't have internet, give one of these phone numbers a call and talk to somebody. Your life is worth more than you think it is. A lot of people get down and out on things. Don't give up. Keep trying. Give it your best. Like I said, there's five, five major phone numbers right there for you. All right, so that's it for today. I hope everybody has a great day, a great night, whatever the case may be. If you need to call one of these numbers, it's on my screen. Just come back and look at the video. If you don't have a chance to write it down, come back, write it down, give them a call. 
God bless you.